you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Don't forget immediately after this, go over to MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com, listen to some good music, but more importantly, I got China Dial in for the rest of the Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem Show. If you like to donate, you can buy the Cash App, Dollar Sign, Motorcycle Madhouse, PayPal, all that. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video as well as power rock on, baby. But we got some sad news today, man. Sad news. Uh, a legend indeed in the Biker News deal. Uh, Biker News Network, they've been around since 1997. Uh, they were one of the first to really get into biker news, keeping the community updated on what's happening in the scene. And Thumper, man, he was one of the prominent ones on that site that made sure that Biker News Network kept on going. Uh, he passed away, and uh, this is by Chopper Guy. It was April 12th. Uh, it's with a heavy heart that I have let have to let the entire biker community know we have lost one of the most righteous motherfuckers i've ever known thumper kept his place running for 15 years he has been on here almost every day posting most of the news you read he has kept the lights on when no one else would from me and the entire biker news network and everyone who has ever graced its pages chris thumper you will be greatly missed uh, December 16th, 1959 to March 28th, 2021. That is a sad state of affairs right there. I remember, uh, you know, when I was in the club scene and all that good stuff, man, everybody would read, uh, BNN and it's been going since 1997, a long freaking time, man. They are great people over there, and it is uh, sad to see them go. I've had some conversations with them before. A real righteous guy, man. Real righteous. A lot of these guys uh, work hard to make sure that you have the news that's going on in the scene because i always talk about it man especially back in 1997 there was only easy riders and stuff the internet was really just coming to age back then and they were the first ones to come out and keep everybody freaking informed of what was going on here what was going on there it takes a lot of work to run one of these sites to keep everybody updated and i know the sites get a lot of freaking headaches and stuff because some people don't like the news that's being put on there some people feel like hey you know that's club business well you know i always say club business it's in the public sphere man you can't go after us because it's in the public sphere everybody knows about it already uh but uh it it's it puts everything in one place where you're able to read it instead of jumping here or jumping there, jumping there. It's there for you guys to read, to get in the know, and I, I, I'm flabbergasted. Uh, I really am. I can't believe it. Uh, he was a great person, and uh, he kept BNN going, like they said, for the last 15 years because it is hard, and sometimes uh you feel like hey man you're the freaking lightning rod and stuff because people are pissed off at what you're putting out there but they always believed in sourcing their material uh where you can go straight directly to the new sh source if you wanted to that way you could see it uh the integrity of the story uh they were the godfathers of biker news man they really were they were the godfathers of biker news and, you know, our uh, sympathies, our condolences, everything goes out to uh, uh, BNN as well as the family of uh, Thumper and stuff. And he was a fisherman. That's kick-ass, man. That's kick-ass. But uh, sad state of affairs on his passing, man. Uh, if you guys can go over to BNN and uh, drop a kind word or something, that would be appreciated because... They work just as hard as we do here, man. 
to get you the news that you deserve. So with that, uh, also today we're going to be uh, talking about the case of the 69ers down in Florida. And I covered this one when it was happening. I was kind of freaking uh, out there, I guess. I wasn't coming uh, from a clear head on it, if you will. And if you notice what I've been doing, you know, because I came to the decision of, you know what, I got to come from the straight and narrow. I can't have no biases when I do this type of stuff. You know, just use it from what you're uh, learning from the cases. But... This thing down in Florida was pretty messed up with the 69ers. It really was. It reminded me of the Sons of Damn Anarchy, the way everything went down. Uh, they were caught on video committing this murder. Uh, just like it would have been Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> Everybody's seen it. Everybody's seen the pictures, how they rolled up. But one thing uh, that never ceases to amaze me is the stupidity of some people. They did it on their own bikes. They had uh, stickers on the bikes. Everything Nowadays, it's really hard to pull off anything because all the technology. That includes the internet. That includes the cameras. Uh, these freaking feds man they think you have anything to do with anything boom they're in there season everything that you got computers the whole nine yards because even if you factory reset computers they can still get what they want they're not stupid and it always uh surprises me when you have people putting stuff on social media it's like they don't even have to do their job. <laughs> You're doing it for them. And it, it, you know, I guess I'd have to say if I was ever in a club, nobody would know it. Nobody would know anything that I'm doing because. I guess I'm from the old school where you don't put nothing on the internet, you don't say what you're doing. Or any of that kind of crap. You know, more of my thinking I put into my book, A Brotherhood and Betrayal. And you can, if you get the book, you can see where I'm coming from when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'd never tell anybody I'm in a club, especially on social media, man. It's shit. Hell no, man. There's too many busybodies out there that are trying to figure out who you are, what you're doing, and all that kind of crap. And the feds never stop, man. They never do. It's like, yeah, right, whatever. So uh, we're going to be talking about them. And you know what is funny? And I'll actually talk about this in a video I got coming up uh, tomorrow. Some of these people that were in the 69ers were ex-Iron Order members. And that kind of flabbergasted me. I know it's happening. I'm hearing it all the time. I know everybody's bashing on Iron Order like they're the punching bag, but at the same time, you got some major clubs pulling from Iron Order as well as flipping whole entire chapters of Iron Order. And that's something I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? Uh, the, the scene is having a lot of hard time getting people to join up with clubs. And I don't think that has anything to do with clubs as it does the way society is today. You got to remember, it's hard to get the younger kids away from the damn freaking uh, computers and the gaming shit. More or less get them into a damn club. So it, it just seems kind of weird that that happens and all the cheerleaders for their clubs are like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, man, do you know that you're wearing a support uh, shirt or something uh, for a chapter that used to be all Iron Order? It's like, man, you got to think about it right there, man. If they actually knew that, they'd be like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Uh, so, but, yeah, I heard that. Uh, I actually, I you know, I know because, you know, they pointed it out to me and stuff, who it was and all that kind of shit. Shit. But this case has to do with the 69ers down in Florida. They called their chapter the Killsboro. 
whatever. And they did a surprise hit on a really good outlaw, man. A really good guy. He was he was a fucking awesome guy. But anyway, personal feelings aside, uh, they were caught on camera. They were going through all the trial and stuff, and guess what happened? They, you know what? I've never seen something like this before, where everybody was going against each other in the club and turning and all that kind of crap. I'm talking, they were running to the cops to freaking tell them everything after they got caught. It's a sad state of affairs because the 69ers have a pretty good rep up in the Northeast. So for this to happen and the way it happened in Florida is like, wow. And then when you think back and say, well, one of the guys was uh, Iron Order. And then everybody's like, oh, okay, now we get it. But why take them in the first place? Is what I'm saying if that's the way you guys feel about Iron Order. Again, I'm not poking or any of that type of stuff. I'm just asking legitimate questions because these guys went at each other's throats to turn on one each other on each other. Now it didn't work. Uh, life in prison is what a lot of them uh, got, but it is still a sad state of affairs. You know, knowing that, you know, everybody was fighting to get riding on each other. You know, one thing that uh, hopefully I've been showing with some of these cases is when a club sticks together, when they don't break ranks, they usually beat the case. I talked about that big case with the Bagos uh, yesterday where they all stuck together and all of them walked that's true brotherhood right there what you're about to hear about down in uh, florida with the 69ers that wasn't true brotherhood they didn't stick together worth the shit and guess what happened everybody ended up doing life in prison because of this stupid incident why they did this you know I don't know, man. I'm not going to get into that politic crap with uh, the club stuff. But uh, let's take a look. Let's get a background on all this type of stuff. Now, this was out of the Tampa Bay Times. Uh, a violent feud led up to the slaying of Pasco uh, Outlaws leader, or Pasco. It started with stolen biker vests. Now, as you can see, uh, I don't know if my cursor's working on the OBS, but anyway, uh, the two different bikes, uh, they were dressed in black, black gloves, all that type of stuff, something you'd see in the Sons of Anarchy. I think they actually thought this was going to work, and they weren't going to get caught, but as you can see, they were caught on camera, you'd get a lot of detail just out of that picture alone, the makes of the bikes, uh, there was stickers on it, there was a different angle I um, believe in, uh, one of the guys had uh, one of his sleeves up, you know, you could probably see tattoos under there, uh, but anyway... Here was uh, Paul. He is on the top left. And then you got the other ones that were 69ers. Now, uh, the story is uh, December 31st of 2018. And Tampa, this was out of the Tampa Bay Times. Uh, the 69ers Motorcycle Club is a nationwide organization whose members pride themselves on being part of the 1%. That is the small uh, fraction of bikers who shirk society's rules in Ta the tampa bay area they call themselves the killsborough chapter inductees adopted names like pumpkin dirty and biggie beef okay so that was uh background i guess on them the killsborough chapter i don't know if that chapter even exists anymore if it went down with them uh what they did with that but they were channeling Sons of Anarchy. They really were. 
Uh, anyway, uh, they nurtured with what prosecutors say was a criminal enterprise focused on narcotics distribution. Uh, then they graduated to uh, murder. The target was Paul Anderson. Uh, the Anderson was uh, president of the Cross uh, Bayou chapter of the AOA. Uh, anyway, uh, they go on and say that his slaying was brazen in December of 2017 during rush hour on the Suncoast Park roadway, rattled with local law enforcement. You know, it's funny, law enforcement, uh, they always get that out there, don't they? Uh, what our authorities didn't reveal, though, with, was the story of a deliberate campaign of violent retribution. That tale has since been spelled out in court documents and transcripts related to the federal racketeering case against five members. So, yeah, there was five members in this. And uh, let's see here. Alan uh, Burt Guanto was a 69er. They called him Big Beefy, all 250 pounds of him. And there wasn't a photograph obtained by law enforcement. The Brandon man stands in a sleeveless black vest with a miniature Confederate flag behind him and a long uh, white semicircular patch on his side reading Killsboro. I believe that was the guy that was an Iron Order member. If I'm mistaken, let me get, let me know, guys. Let me know. Uh, then they go in about the rockers and all that type of stuff. Uh, they were wearing their uh, vest the night of April 18th when they attended a bike night. Uh, the outlaws were there too, and they didn't take too kindly to two 69ers. The pair suffered a beating from a dozen sets of fists and boots. Then the outlaws took their vest. Word got back to the other Killsboro members. Uh, Dirty uh, Cosimo. Oh, I think that was him. You know, I'm not going to put out there which one was and which one wasn't. But I do know that uh, ex-Iron Order members were involved in this. Uh, they vowed they would take the lives of two outlaws in retaliation. Uh, it all happened uh, to James Jimbo Costa in the span of 18 minutes. One more warm, breezy summer. Uh, he drove his uh, Harley Davidson and talked about that. Costa was a captain and a career firefighter with uh, Hillsborough County. He was also the president of the St. Petersburg chapter of the Outlaws. Uh, he retired from firefighting in 2016. Uh, yeah, you you know what? That's pretty messed up, man. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, but anyway. You know, then they go into this long, drawn-out deal about this uh, incident, why it happened, all that good shit. But let's get to uh, the confidential informant, and that was the execution. Okay, here we go. Uh, the day after they allegedly assassinated the leader of a rival motorcycle gang, Christopher Dirty Casamo and Michael Pumpkin Mencher turned to a buddy for help. They called fellow 69ers Motorcycle Club member Sean Phelps Lennard, quote, this is not a good situation, brother. Uh, it was worse than he, uh, even Mencher knew for unspeknownst to the two men, Leonard was a confidential informant secretly recording conversations for federal agents. One thing about clubs, and you know what, it's not more the older clubs than it is the newer clubs, you know, ones that just start up and throw 1% diamonds on them on their self and then next thing you know they're recruiting nationwide is you're gonna more than likely get yourself an informer in there man anyway that was uh, a confidential informant uh, <laughs> Phelps Leonard uh, Cosimo and Mensher both made several calls to Leonard less than 12 hours after the execution that's why they got him so fast uh, the 44-year-old president of the Cross Bio Chapter. Uh, the auto recordings were played for a federal grand jury. Uh, not a grand jury, but a jury as the Paris murder trial continued. Uh, Leonard was called to the witness stand by the states and just a few feet from his former comrades. Comrades. <laughs> Uh, they accused uh, Cosimo and Mencher of riding their motorcycles and tracking the Anderson's pickup truck as he drove north on the Suncoast. 
they were armed. Uh, the two were out for revenge. Uh, Anderson and a group of outlaws. They, you know, we talked about why it happened. Uh, after the shooting, photos of the two uh, masked bikers sitting on their motorcycles in traffic saturated local news. Uh, we had it on there, man. As soon as it happened, we had it on HarleyLiberty.com, you know. And I was saying it back at the, that time that, yeah, they're going to catch these guys within a couple hours and stuff because you just don't do that stuff. Uh, frightened Cosmo called Leonard that night to ask if he had room in his garage. You know what I'm talking about, right? All this is on freaking audio recording, man. All of it. Uh, he told Leonard he had to paint his motorcycle and tear it apart. Uh, in another call recorded uh, with Menchard, Leonard said, Well, at least at least you guys covered your faces and shit. Yeah, thank God. Uh, he added later, I don't mind doing things, but not in broad daylight. This is all captured, man, with a, a confidential informant right there. And then they caught him. Uh, during the conversation, Menchard implied that Anderson would not have been allowed to escape. If he would have drove away, I would have just opened up into the back of the of him. You know what I mean. Uh, then the DA asked uh, Leonard and Menchard meant by that. He said he thought Menchard was implying that he was ready to kill Anderson. Uh, anyway... Neither one of them knew Leonard was working for the government at the time, according to the state. To them, Leonard was a founder of the Hillsborough uh, County branch of the 69ers, what members called the Killsboro. So here's the founder of the chapter, and boom, he's an informant. You know, that's why some of the clubs have a year hangaround and a year prospect before their first vote, before a chapter or charter is even given, so they get to know who the hell everybody is. Uh, he, uh, This Leonard became a confidential informant working for the ATF in the mid-2017. Uh, he was part of his deal involving a case of illegal selling guns in New York State. Uh, he helped federal agents monitor his fellow 69ers in Tampa, before and after Anderson's death, the Outlaws and the 69ers are two of the nation's most... Pr no, they're not. See, that's where they get everything uh, wrong with uh, newspapers and stuff. Uh, the Outlaws are the 69ers are not a prominent and violent biker gang. Uh, they're small. Uh, and he told uh, the jury he had no idea that the guy was being targeted... Uh, they uh, actually uh, were facing first-degree uh, murder-related. Uh, now, two were found guilty of murdering um, uh, chapter president of Outlaws Motorcycle Club. Uh, that was the first one. Let me look at that one. Okay, let's go to the ATF release real quick. They sentenced Brian Casamano, uh, a.k.a. Dirty, and Michael Dominic Mencher, who was pumpkin to life in federal prison plus 10 years and life in prison plus five years for conspiracy to commit murder in aid of racketeering, murder in the aid of racketeering. Uh, that's another one. And related firearm offenses. A federal ju uh, jury found Cosimo and Mencher guilty on August 12th of 2019, uh, along with three co-defendants who later pleaded guilty. According to the testimony in court documents, uh, the two were members of the 69ers. Uh, now it says uh, in 2017 what happened, the entangled, uh, what they had to would do with that. And this is, they go on to say this is another case prosecuted as part of the Department of Justice Project Safe Neighborhoods, which is a nationwide crime reduction strategy aimed at decreasing violence in communities. So, basically what happened during rush hour, they did a Sons of Anarchy BS. Then they went and talked to the so-called leader of their club, who was already an informant because he had gun charges out of New York, and he flipped on the club. Uh, there was, let's see here, there was five members indicted in this stuff. Uh, let's see here. 
let's see, were implicated. Now these, now those three and two other uh, have been indicted on federal. Well, yeah, they got federal racketeering and all that stuff. Uh, the ones that were indicted, uh, you got the two that did the killing. Uh, another one, Guanto of uh, Brandon. So yeah, they uh, they got hit hard, man. They were taken down. So I don't know if that uh, chapters even left anymore. But it was all started from the start by a confidential informer who was the actual founder of that chapter which is pretty wow are you kidding me man nobody knew about this stuff there's a lot of signs that you can pick up uh when it comes to this kind of stuff but it, what it didn't tell you is i didn't grab that one article but all those guys all five of them were going back and forth blaming each other and it didn't stop until the sentencing came down. Some of them, I think, turned to the feds to let them know what was going on. I have no idea. But it was just funny that the whole thing started with a confidential informant. The whole chapter. Uh, maybe that explains why they had a ex-Iron Order member in there. I, I don't know. I can't say what they were thinking at the time. Uh, maybe they weren't thinking at all, <laughs> but, you know, there's a whole ton of material on this case. Again, like I said in the other uh, video, it's hard for me to get everything in within, uh, you know, that half hour span uh, because there's a lot of other stuff I like covering uh, as far as cases. So I just uh, skim over it. You guys have to go out there, get the materials. I give you a, you know, a starting point, go out, learn about the case, and hopefully you can make your decision on what you think when you get all the material and skim over that type of stuff because that's important you got to get both sides of the story uh yeah this happened because two of them got uh you know beat up and you know that's the thing about throwing on these diamonds and stuff man these new clubs it's like wh why do you even want to put a diamond on man you're you're putting all kinds of shit you know, you're trying to start a club. You're, you know, you don't, you want to go right to it, man. A lot of these clubs don't understand. That, you know, the big ones have been around decades upon decades, and it took a lot of work to get to where they're at. You're not going to do it overnight just because you can do it on the internet. And you're also watering down the diamond. That's pretty fucked up, but, uh, you know, that's the way people are, man. It's a new age. Uh, like I talk about a new age in Biking and Brotherhood. Everything's changed, man. Everything has really changed. And I guess it's hard to evolve with it because just the thinking is like, are you kidding me? Why in the hell would you try to pull something like this on a bike dressed just like Jax Teller? You're all over TV and next thing you know, you're talking on audio, and then, you know, you know your ass is in a sling, you try to freaking cooperate, and then that don't work, you're throwing everybody under the bus. It, it is what it is, that's the way some people think nowadays, but anyway... Uh, we're about to go over to the second half of the show. The second half of the show, we go to about 9.30. So, yeah, it starts at 8 o'clock right here on YouTube. Then it moves over to MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. Or you can go into the Discord server, which the link is right there. Hit that, and boom, join up on the Discord. We're usually uh, at... Well, where are we at? We're usually in the radio room. It says it on the left-hand side, uh, Motorcycle Madhouse Radio. And you can watch us live right there. We're on camera the whole nine yards, given uh, what's happening in the background of the show. And I think you guys uh, really enjoyed over on Discord. And then right after that, man, it's 24-7 of music, 365 days a year of some of the best rock and roll out there, man. A lot of that stuff, uh, the list is refreshed monthly. You hardly uh, hear the same songs. Uh, it's not like the radio where they'll, where they'll uh, play it four or five times an hour. It's not like that there on our stuff. So, And 
You'll love it, man. Take us to work. It's also on the Xeno app. All you have to do is put Motorcycle Madhouse uh, Radio in there, and it takes you with. Uh, don't forget to get uh, some of our uh, support merchandise. But uh, I'll see you over on the second half of the show, guys. Brotherhood and Betrayal is an in-depth look at the trials and tribulations of street gang and motorcycle club life. This isn't the run-of-the-mill book that doesn't get the goods. This book will go into detail of events that actually happened. All materials in this book have been approved by those involved. There is nothing poetic, nor is there any price worth paying for the life we choose to live on the streets. James Hollywood Machikari, Brotherhood and Betrayal. 